Turn off the lights. Yeah, it's probably if you've seen it, hold it the laughter.
Bushhood, the only trial lawyer in the country who's for me. <laughs> I tell you, you reporters would go nuts if you knew the true story. <laughs> he was as drunk as a skunk. <laughs> Oh, people were ducking and diving for cover. I wish I could have been there. I saw him walking down the hallway the other day. I looked at him and said, don't shoot. You see, you see people don't see the fun side of Nick. Nick's a good man. He has a good car. Well, he's a good man. <laughs>
America that should come together, Republican and Democrat and John McCain. <laughs> I believe in bipartisan, bipartisanship. Yeah. You see, it's, it, it's, it's like this here. We can all come together. It's, it's, here's a visual. See here, looky here. See there? See there's the church. And there's the staple. Open the door. Look at all the people. You see, they're all happy and wiggling. There's me and Senator Kennedy on the front row. <laughs> you know, I couldn't have said that better myself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that ruggedly good-looking guy right there is Steve Bridges. Okay, I thought I'd start out with a little bit of humor, because this is a case of uh, an example of how when you're trying to effectively communicate your message in public, what's going on in your mind doesn't necessarily go through when you say it. And I am a big supporter of the President, and I feel that many of the things that have been said have not been understood. So today, we're going to try to see if we could um, uh, work on how we could get our message across in a much more effective and assertive way. One of the things that I think is important is that when, um, and first of all, let me, let me ask this. How many of you are uh, still in college? Okay, so most of you, right? And then the other thing is, how many of you, uh, even if you're out of college, have ever taken a public speaking class? Raise your hand. Okay. But I'm sure all of you have been asked to give presentations before, right? How many of you have been asked to give presentations before? Raise your hand. Basically everybody. Okay. One of the things, and, and this goes for me as well as when we first start out giving a public uh, uh, presentation, uh, one of the things that immediately comes to mind is, wow, I'm going to be in front of people, how am I going to do it, right? Well, I think the best thing to do is to somehow keep it simple, the rules of KIS, keep it simple, right? And so today, we're basically going to go briefly through some of the basic principles on maybe how we keep things simple when we're giving a speech. First thing is, we want to see why? We want to answer the questions why, what, who, and how. We want to touch on the topics of psychology and preparation, and then we'll conclude with a uh, 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 basic discussion. First thing, why is effective and assertive communication important? Well, the first thing you know is you're trying to make a point, and then you're also trying to accomplish a set of tasks. So you want people to understand, to hear, and to uh, work with you. Second question is, what do you want to communicate, right? And I'm sure uh, some of you have seen this. The key point here is, what is the message you want to get across? The third question we want to answer is, who is our target audience? Whether it's your peers, uh, other students, or professionals, etc. And the fourth uh, question is, how do you get the message across? And this, it's up to you. You can do it by, what I try doing just now, is by putting a little humor in to, keep you from falling asleep, or slideshows and handouts interaction, right? But the key point is keep it simple. This is what I think is very important because when you think about uh, public speech or a public presentation, I would say standing here in front of you is only 10% of the work. 90% is all with already uh, having been done, having been prepared. Why? Because before I come in here, I'm thinking, who am I talking to? Second point is, what am I trying to do? And third thing is, to make sure that you get the message I'm trying to communicate, right? And one of the things I highlighted here is psychology, because I think psychology is really important. We're all humans, we all have emotions and feelings. And one of the things that we're always going to be uh, feeling if we're asked to stand in front of people is, well, you know, what if I don't do the right thing? So embarrassment, uh, 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 discomfort, um, a general sense of uh, nervousness, right? And so, but, but the, the flip side is this, if you can provide a sense of confidence and communicate clarity of purpose, then you show conviction. And that's what will help drive the message across. So the next point is public speaking is more art than science, meaning that all of us I'm, I, I, you know, I was at once, at one time, a technical major, and then I switched over to the business side. Uh, many of you are maybe uh, uh, liberal arts, science, med, law, so forth, right? So we all have different backgrounds. But the important thing is that public speaking—it's not something that 
I can't do because I am an art major, or you can't do because you're a law major. In fact, public speaking is the one thing where all of us can practice and actually and actually perform and do well, even though we have very different backgrounds, right? The key point here is that because it's an art, then the practice of it and the experience matters greatly. So, if we keep that in mind, the next point is that preparation is where you're going to make a difference, right? And here I live by the basic uh, tenet that if you fail to plan, plan to fail. Because if you fail to actually prepare yourself, then just go in there and, and don't worry about it. Because if, if you fail to plan and then you start getting nervous about it, you'll do even worse, right? So keep that in mind. And the second point in the preparation is always have a routine. And here, I always try to distinguish two things. First of all, the routine is the informal side. Informal means that how do I want to go in and present to my audience what I want to communicate. Okay. Uh, for me, uh, when, when I was uh, growing up and learning uh, to do presentations, my father we used to give more uh, presentations uh, because he's a professor. Uh, basically, he said to me, he said, you know, visualize. Before you go in, uh, he, this is what he said. He said, well, when, when I uh, prepare for a speech, I'll go into uh, the uh, bathroom and I look at the mirror with a speech and pretend that I am naked. And so I start you know, laughing. He says, yes, do that, because once you get all the discomfort out, then you can be very comfortable giving a speech. Right? So visualization, improvisation, and humor. What do I mean by improvisation? I mean that when you go into a public setting and you're about to give a speech, try not merely to uh, focus on your speech, but look at the things around you. If someone's making a joke, use that joke, and then interject that into your presentation. Why? Because it seems like everything is a train and a very nice cycle, right? And humor. I love humor because in this society, we have to learn to make light of ourselves, right? How many times have you seen, when you think about it, the, the, uh, uh, the, the older generation, when they go in and they give a speech, uh, it seems so serious, it seems so heavy, right? But you know what? Yes, there are serious issues, and yes, there are heavy things, but the thing is, we have to learn to make light of it, right? And the formal side is you have to always prepare an outline. Do it on paper, do it in your head, uh, do it on, uh, on your uh, PowerPoint, that's fine. But just do that so that you can help yourself organize, right? The chief of staff for the president, uh, Andrew Card, he used to say that he looks at his organization as like his cabinet. Well, uh, kitchen cabinet, where there's a lot of, uh, in the pantry, there's a lot of shelves, right? And then he goes by and visualizes everything in that manner. And that helps to, that helps him organize and present uh, in a tremendous way. Again, keep it simple. Oops, sorry, I'm going to come back to this with email communication. So, basically, that's, that's, that's my presentation, because I didn't want to burden you today with having to remember main details about public speaking. It's really an art. And so as you learn to, uh, uh, as you learn and as you uh, are required to give more public presentations, just remember these basic uh, tenets, right? One of the ways that yesterday after our uh, presentation, someone said, well, you know, uh, the difficulty has to do with sometimes nowadays when everybody's uh, sending email communication. How do I communicate that? Because there's, there's a lot of misunderstanding that can go in with your email. In fact, I've, I've done that hundreds of times, right? There's no easy answer to email communications because one of the things we have to remember when we're, getting, when we're sending out email is the fact that within an email, unless you're willing to write down in the, in the context of a book your emotions, no one completely understands my facial expression, no one completely understands my tone, my pace, and so forth, right? So it leads to uh, 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 being easily misunderstood and the, the third point is, with the lack of immediate interaction, suddenly you can't sense the urgency in what I'm trying to say, or the lack of urgency, right? So this is something just to keep in mind when you're trying to communicate outside of, 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 of speaking in a public environment, right? Um, earlier you saw the uh, video with uh, the president. That was the president and then an impersonator who basically is giving his thoughts inside the president's head. Right. Now I'm going to highlight to you gender communications because here's where, again, it's an example of, uh, of how if we don't learn to communicate in an effective
effective manner, a lot of misunderstandings and problems could, could arise. And I experienced this because as a married person, then you, you're bound to it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try this. This is the secrets of women's language. A must read for any man. It's about people here. Okay. Key words and their meanings. Okay, this is the highlight gender communications. Fine. Okay. This is the word we use at the end of any argument that we feel we are right about but need to shut you up. Never use fine to describe how a woman looks. This will cause you to have one of those arguments. Five minutes. This is half an hour. It is equivalent to the five minutes that your football game is going to last before you take out the trash. So it's a good trade. <laughs> Nothing. This means something and you should be on your toes. Nothing is used to describe the feeling a woman has of wanting to turn you inside out, upside down, and backwards. Nothing usually signifies an argument that would last five minutes and end with the word fine. <laughs> Go ahead. This is a dare. One that will result in a woman getting upset over nothing will end with the word fine. And then the next one is, go ahead, softer. This means I give up or do what you want because I don't care. You will see raised eyebrows, go ahead in just five minutes, followed by nothing and fine. And she will talk to you in about five minutes when she cools off. On the outside. This is not actually a word, but it's often a verbal statement very misunderstood by men. A loud sign means she thinks you are an idiot at that moment and wonders why she is wasting her time standing here and arguing with you over nothing. A soft sign. Again, not a word, but a verbal statement. Soft signs are one of the few things that some men actually understand. She is content. You, your best bet is not to move or breathe, and she will stay content. <laughs> so. Today, to, to, to wrap up, I think that as we're, it, it, the important thing is that as uh, uh, an Asian American, where you know when you think about uh, being an Asian, first of all, in families, you're not expected to be uh, uh, effective public speakers, right? Because our community tends to be less, uh, uh, what I would say, uh, individualistic. So we're not asked to come out in public. Uh, second of all, is a lot of times. We're not asked to be public, right? But in this society where uh, the advancement, but uh, also promoting your cause is very important, then learning to effectively communicate in front of uh, men, women, students, uh, family members, uh, community leaders, it is truly, uh, the, to me, the most important type. Because if I have a good point, and if I have a good cause, if I don't know how to communicate it to others, then I might as well just keep it within myself. Uh, next, I wanted to uh, maybe uh, hear from all of you, because normally, uh, yesterday, Sue and I uh, were doing this, the, the, that's, that my, my, the, the whole point about this today was to keep it simple, so I didn't want to drag it out to be 50 minutes. I'm, I'm completely uh, finished with my presentation. Maybe you, could, you all could share with me some of the other issues that uh, you face from time to time in public speaking. Yesterday, one of the things that uh, one of the uh, audience members raised was the fact that, yes, yeah, sometimes it's very difficult to keep things concise, right? To keep it short and to keep it organized, okay? Uh, if there is a, uh, and, and I thought that was a very important point, because if we uh, drag it out way too long, people fall asleep, people kind of digress and think about the walls or the winds outside, and so they don't remember your message anymore. Right? So, and do you, how, let, let me see a show of hands on, uh, well, no, let, let me put it back to you, rather. How many of you have experienced uh, basic uh, uh, communications issues where you think you could have done something better? Maybe you could share it with us. Research group oh, yeah. um, canvassing on the street and talking to people about uh, the important issues. And every night I come back and I would get no response from people. And every night the director would tell me you're talking too fast. Mm -hmm. And 
on the on the day where I consciously slow down, uh, pronunciate each word. Uh, it feels weird because you're like slowing down. Yes. You know? But uh, when you're talking to people for the first time, they don't know who you are, and you're talking too fast, um, they just won't catch it. That's right. It flies by, right? I experienced that within my household, you know, where basically uh, when, when uh, and in general, this is, not, this is not a weakness. This is basically a habit that you just have to modify in order to uh, adjust and, and uh, be able to communicate. Yeah. Uh, Keep in mind too, when I was talking about uh, uh, it over here, in terms of the informal routine, put that in there, right? Uh, how do you emphasize? You emphasize by, uh, by moderating your tone, your voice, and your speed so that others could absorb it, right? I tend to talk on the slow side, okay? So a lot of times I actually may put you to sleep rather than wake you up. Uh, but I'll be able to modify it if I get excited enough, right? Uh, but thanks for that uh, input there. Because it is important, because you're doing it from a really public interest in a research group. It's kind of also has a polling arm, doesn't it? I'm sorry, yeah. It, it has a polling uh, uh, arm, the PIRG. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay, yeah. So he's doing work with people on a daily basis, and that's one of the key points that he stresses, right? Any, any other... Uh, yeah. I'm not sure the speech to the movie's audience where language is not my strength in the video's language. So I guess with the psychology part here, the confidence wasn't very strong when I couldn't enunciate very well, grasp very well. So I guess what do you suggest there when this video is language where should we do half and half or stick with what you're confident with? Good point. Two things to keep in mind is uh, you said, uh, so you said in front of a Vietnamese audience, right? First thing is this, when you think about Vietnamese audience, I can speak to you as a peer, as an equal, even though you're younger than me, or you could have been older than me, right? But in the Vietnamese, uh, uh, in the Asian society, obviously it's very hierarchical. So suddenly, if you were to speak purely in English, they'll think, well, what, what the heck is this guy doing, right? So th there's the first issue that you have to deal with, which basically is, a, is an age uh, uh, gap, right? Uh, second issue is how do uh, again how do I get my message across? Okay. Um, I'll answer the second issue first. That is, do whatever is comfortable with you, right? Meaning that uh, if I know that you guys uh, don't understand English but you want me to speak in Vietnamese, then I'll certainly actually revert back to Vietnamese. But then you'll think of the simple words to enunciate, right? I mean it's it's all theory, but I, I've had some practice at it. So uh, if, if you guys here today were uh, talking about, uh, uh, wanted to talk about effective communication to Vietnamese, I certainly would keep the same thing, but really keep the simple words in Vietnamese. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then, and, and practice, because uh, one of the things is, uh, one of the things is that uh, when I started uh, giving, you know, doing community work uh, uh, at an uh, uh, earlier age, you do have to practice in Vietnamese. But the first time is always going to be difficult. It gets a heck of a lot easier, uh, the same way that you are asked to give a speech in, uh, in the uh, English version. Anyway, so, right? uh, yes? Well, what do you have for like people that actually like, sometimes are forced to actually uh, make a speech on the spot and just make a one right there? Like, like a Daily, you should wake up with a joke or a piece of humor. Mm -hmm. Because why? Because if you always think of communications as a game, then you'll never panic, right? Uh, when I, yeah, when, when and, and this is gonna be an example of how I prepared for you guys, okay? I was thinking, okay, again, you guys don't wanna put up with a, with a boring speech where I'm gonna read off three pages on how to give a public speech. No, you probably wanna see a little visualization, a little humor on what can go right or what could go wrong, right? And so I've already come in prepared for that. Now on the spot, when you're trying to make it, what you do, think of this, think of the fact that, you know, in Taekwondo or, or in, uh, in martial arts, you're always asked to, to do what? To be on the offensive. Never be on the defensive, right? And that's the key. If someone makes a critical statement, deflect it, right? If someone makes a harsh statement, deflect it. Because by deflecting it, 
you actually bring it around to your control. Let's say you come to me and you say, George Bush really stinks. He's been doing the wrong things, right? I'll say, well, tell me why, right? I'll let you come back to me, and then I'll come with a quick joke. I'll say, look, you know, I saw him in a video recently. It, it, it was really funny because he knows how to make fun of himself. Maybe he knows that his weakness is he doesn't know how to get his message across the way that his supporters think he should, right? So that's how you can deflect it somewhat. Well, what's that argument? What, what if it, you're saying, what if it's just off the cuff, kind of like, not an argument, but more or less like a, yeah. Pretty much like speaking about a topic that, oh, okay, this yeah. more, it's yes. more to actually speak about a topic than, than pretty much or defending that topic on the spot, just like, like, it's like a man or something. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, the, old, uh, the old debating technique is, again, to buy time by repeating that point, say, can you repeat that for me, right? Because then you'll get to, you'll get to process that in your mind, and then you'll get to basically what? you get to basically uh, stake out the way you want to raise your point. So repeat it. You know, make sure that the other person thinks that you didn't hear them the first time. So if you can't, repeat it that to me, right? That helps a lot. I learned that when, uh, you know, uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, under, uh, in undergrad, yes, where basically someone had a customer remind me, don't panic. Just say, please repeat the question, right? Or please, you know, you know, can you, can you uh, uh, explain your point once again, right? That helps, obviously. Yeah. Yes? Well, I just had a comment before. Okay. Uh, I saw a presenter, he, he presented, uh, he had this large image that's very good. Thank you. That's a great point, right? Dual. Plus, it makes you, whatever makes you comfortable, so that may help make you comfortable, right? Yes. And you're a singer. See, you can sing so you know how to communicate. <laughs> Too much. Uh, Tell me if it's too no, much. No, no, and I, I, I think it's no, no. It's, it's, it's somewhat entertaining for me, and I mean, it, it helped me like, you know, pay attention to your speech. And I was wondering, like, how, how does body movement play a role in, you know, an effective speech? Right, right, um, right. If I was up there, I wouldn't be able to. You know? One thing I had practiced is this. Think about this, okay? When I was talking about gender communication and, and how the words from a woman comes out differently to a man, like. Fine, you know. <laughs> yes, I had to practice that. Why? Because in order to prove that point, that I had to assume the role of the woman, right? This is very much like acting in drama, you know. Uh, or five minutes, you know, you drag it out. So think about what uh, a couple of you have said about the the, the uh, need to what the need to basically um, uh, feel like you have to put that yourself into somebody else's position because that's the key there. If you want them to understand you, put yourself in their position you know, and think, well, what are they going to think about what I'm trying to tell them? Now, in terms of body motion, uh, feel free to because a lot of times when you think about, uh, have you ever seen somebody just stand uh, up there and just read and then suddenly it, it freezes you. So suddenly when you're focusing on them, you actually fall asleep, right? Well, if you know that, then you basically think, how do I keep people entertained, right? And, I mean, it, it's something you develop over time. Yes? This is actually more for a comment for her. When I took my public speaking course, what they teach you is that you want to keep body language to a minimal because you don't want it to be distracting. A lot of times what happens is when you get up to speak in front of someone, you get really nervous, so your legs start shaking, or you shift your weight back and forth, or for some guys, they'll keep their hands in their pockets, they're like jingling their keys, Stuff like that is generally a no-no, but what you need to remember is when you're making a speech, every movement you make is with a purpose. So if your point is you know, not to make the policy by focusing on you too much, then you might walk to one side and do half your speech and then walk to the other. Very minimal movement. Because I, like, I myself, I speak a lot from the yeah, That wasn't essential, but I do. And you want to, like, don't want to have your arms going on. Very minimal. Very good point. That's right. That's right. And tailor everything to the audience. Again, when, when I was talking about the who is your target audience, um, no, sorry, here we go. And you know, 
that's the first thing they say when you're in public speaking, because th there's nothing scientific about this. Just remember the basics, because when you get into working as a, purely on a scientific level, you forget how to make the other person interested. But that's, thank you for that point, because that is very true, too. And tell me if I'm doing too much. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 